What's up, everybody? This is episode 50 of Hoops Talk with Dave's Joint. Um, shout outs to everybody that's shown love thus far. You know, for those that haven't seen it, go check it out on YouTube, Facebook, and IGTV. But we have a special guest today. This guy hails from Atlanta, Georgia, and he just ran one of the most successful AAU events of this summer during the quarantine period. I give to you, Mr. Jerome Weaver. Jerome, thank you for coming on to talk about um, everything and share your story. Yeah, appreciate you having me, man. Thank you for having me. So um, my first question for you is, you know, when did, you, when did basketball start for you? Well, you know, I was a player, obviously. I'm um, 6'6", six, six, so <laughs> I was a player and I played, um, shoot, since I was a, a kid, legit. And then, um, you know, once, once I went to college for basketball, and when, once that was over, um, I really had a resentment for basketball for a long period of time because, you know, every kid uh, slash college player think they should be in the pros. So um, I kind of had a resentment towards basketball and didn't want to be around it. And then I started dating a woman, and uh, her kid wanted to play. So I went out and I um, – you know, try to help him play and, and kind of coach them a little bit. And it felt like playing. I'm like, wow, this feels like playing. So um, I start coaching at that point, from that point forward, and just got back involved with basketball. And I've been involved ever since, uh, from coaching to events to, um, to everything else. And so I say that to say for the young players that are listening, even if you don't make it playing, you can still be a part of basketball and be successful in basketball by doing other things involved in basketball. Absolutely. That's a fact. So what, um, when, um, when, uh, what part of Atlanta are you from and what's the basketball culture like down there? Oh, well, I'm from, I'm from Decatur, Georgia, you know, um, that's, that's, that's what you probably hear. If you hear about Atlanta, you hear about Decatur. Right. Uh, born and raised in Decatur, Georgia. I currently live in uh, Gwinnett County now. But um, the basketball community, I don't know if y'all know about Georgia basketball, but mm -hmm. it's like second to none. Um, you got Lewis Williams. You, I mean, you got Dwight Howard. You got Josh Smith. Um, you know, you got Anthony Edwards that coming out this year. You got B.J. Boston, Sharif Cook. I mean, it just it goes on and on. Uh, the amount of players that come out of uh, the state of Georgia, just in the 285 radius, right? So just in the Atlanta radius itself. And, um, you know, so it's so many players that come. Javaris Crittenton, like, it's just so many players that comes to mind when you think about Sharif Abdul Rahim, when you think about just Atlanta basketball. So the community around here and the coaches down here, as you probably could see from uh, when you came down to visit, is just amazing, right? So they come out. They really, really love their basketball down here. Uh, and, you know, it's a great community and atmosphere. So where did you play high school basketball? I played at Decatur High School. I played at Decatur High School. You know what's funny? I actually, I've recently had a guest whose episode came out, Mr. Sharman White. Yeah, Sherman, oh, yeah. So yeah. did you guys go to high school around the same time or? No, no, Sherman was a little older than me. However, Sherman, me and Sherman grew up in the same projects though. Uh, oh. Yeah, which was across the street from Decatur High. Um, and yeah, so we grew up in the same project. So I know him, Sherman, and he known me ever since we was small, like little kids, little kids. Now, so what, what's the name of the projects that you grew up in? Uh, it's called the Old P's. They call it the old P's, but it's 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 real name was Allen Wilson Terrace, but it's it's nickname was the old P's, the old okay. project. Yeah. Allen Wilson Terrace. Yeah. Got you. All right. So what what college did you play at? Uh, I played um I went to junior college originally, uh was Pasco Hernando uh community college, which was in, in Pasco County, Florida. And then I ended up going to the University of Florida. Nice. Yes. So how was how was everything in Gainesville? Like talk about your college career in, in Gainesville. It was it was pretty good. I um you know it was it was a culture shock, you know, being from Atlanta. Atlanta we call Black Hollywood. Um <laughs> you know, 
but it was a culture shock being around different types of people. Uh, football was, you know, obviously the main thing in, in Florida, That's but uh, the college career was pretty good around some great, great players. And, um, you know, and, and I played football as well coming out of high school and uh, tried out for the football team down there, ended up getting hurting myself. And that was the end of my college career. Mm. So, yeah. Oh, you played football down I there? Played, I played basketball first. So I was a football, basketball player in high school. Okay. Um, and so uh, when I got to college, I don't know if you, but like I missed it. And so J junior college in Florida don't have football. They just right. have basketball. So I kind of missed it, man. I kind of really want to have my shot at it again uh, because I, I really did miss it and went out and, and then taught my knee. So what year did you graduate from Decatur High? 1998. Okay, got you. So you graduated from UF in 2002. I didn't graduate from oh. college. No, not at all. So you did some time. Okay, not, not a problem. Mm -hmm. So when did um, Hoop Hustlers come into play? All right, so <clears throat> Hoop Hustler came into play maybe two years ago. I, um, I've been doing the Tip-Off Classic for five years now. Um, and kind of just wanted to have something that kind of said who I was as a brand, you know what I mean? And kind of give my culture what my culture needed. Uh, in, in, this, in this community, basketball community, a lot of people that are making the names for themselves and making the headways don't look like me and you, unfortunately. Mm, yeah, and, sure. um, but I wanted to give my culture something that knows about that culture. And that's what Hoop Hustler came in at. And it came, the name came from me being um, on my own since I was 17 years old and kind of just hustling, man. Not like in a, in a drug type of way, but- No, just, yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's straight hustling, like- Right. And it, and it kind of also uh, means a lot in basketball when you hustle, you know what I mean? So it was just the perfect blend of hooping and hustling. And I thought that was a perfect name and it's kind of got that grungy. So everything that I put out on that page is kind of grungy. And right. it, it kind of fits that culture, man. So uh, I, I, that's how I came up with the brand. Yeah, man, you gotta love the, like you don't like everything. You got you can't have any, everything that's too glamorous. You gotta have something like gritty in there. Right. Cause I feel like a lot of companies, they go for the glitz and glamor and not right. the grit. Like they don't want the, the hard stories, you know, the real, like, you know, the stories right. that other companies would love to keep out. Right, right. So if you, that's why I got two pages. If you mm -hmm. go to the Tip Off Classic page, that's the corporate page. That's the page you're going to see corporate. You, you'll never see cursing on that page. Yeah. You'll never see none, none of that. But if you go to the Hoop Hustler page, you might that's get a, a little story, cursing. Yeah. <laughs> you might get a little grittiness. You might get that. So that's why I have both pages. And I'm very mindful about what I put out on the Tip Off Classic page and yeah. what I put out on the Hoop Hustler page. Mm -hmm. Right. So Tip Off Classic, like what was the... um. The purpose from day one, like what what did you what was the intentions when you first started this thing? All right, so here's the intention. So, I was working nine to five, and I, you know, I, it's a couple things I really studied. I studied money in high school, like you know what I mean. Like I read books on rich dad, poor dad, Robert Kiyosaki when I was in high school, uh, and I always wanted to start a business. I always wanted to do something that I truly love, and like. Um, listen to uh, one of these. The best thing I ever could listen to was <clears throat> Earl Nightingale, Strangest Little Secret on YouTube. I don't know if you ever heard it, but if you get a chance, y'all need to please check that out. It's All only right. 30 minutes. Earl Nightingale, Strangest <laughs> Little Secret. Mm -hmm. And it just said that <clears throat> a, uh, a happy person is somebody worth working towards a worldly ideal, right? Mm -hmm. And and it's doing that teacher that wanted to be a teacher, that that um, that mom that wanted to be a mom and she's doing that for a living. The teacher who wanted to be a teacher, he's doing that for a living. The businessman that wanted to be a businessman and they're doing that for a living. So I was working at a job that wasn't a worthy ideal. You know what I mean? I was working at a job that wasn't uh, consistent with what I wanted to do for a living, correct? Right. So I said, what do I want to do for a living? And it was basketball. And so, 
not too long after that, I put in my two week notice. <laughs> and um, one of the one of the things in that strange little secret was this, and this is what really did it. Uh, it was say, imagine being in a war and you're traveling over uh, a river. You get to the other side. You have to turn around and burn your ship because when you go into war, you either win or you perish. You can't have that ship back there for you to go back. And so this caused me to burn my ship, which is my job. Mm -hmm. And it forced me to work harder, you know? And so I started that, uh, started putting out, gathering information, and really just went forward with the Tip Off Classic, man. And that's how I got here. Ambassador. So what was it, all right, what was the first year like in the first year, honestly, so I had a whole year to prepare. And the first year was amazing. This is the year Colin Sexton. Um, the first year was Colin Sexton. The first year was uh, Zion Williamson. Um, wow. Yeah, so like this was the first year, right? And I mean, and it was sold out again. So uh, imagine this year times 10. You know what I mean? Like it was sold out again. So it was, it's, so it sell out every year. So that was the uh, inaugural season, right? And it was amazing. Uh, surprisingly, it was super dope. It was super dope for the first year. So how how did it, how does it feel seeing Colin Sexton and Zion Williamson in the NBA now? Like having them, you know, saying like, "Yo, these guys played in my tournament." Well, honestly, we broke. I would I would uh, like to claim that we broke those players um, before before my event. Didn't nobody know who the old player was. Um, Colin Sexton wow. was coming out of off a pretty good high school year. Uh, if you go to YouTube and put Colin Sexton in, in the Tip Off Classic, uh, and he'll bring up an interview he did uh, at the USA. Uh, didn't nobody know who he was, but after that event, everybody knew who he was. Uh, same with Anthony Edwards, who played two years ago in 2018. After, uh, before him playing in that event, didn't nobody know who he was. After that event, everybody knew who he was. Uh, wow. And he's looking to be the number one and number two draft pick. Um, so, yeah, we take pride in breaking players like Zion and, and Colin Sexton. And now, in, in their own credit, they went on and continued that, that lift. You know, like, uh, you know, Colin went on and played EYBL that year and led the EYBL in scoring that year as well. Right. So that, that continued the, the uh, you know, the progress and the notoriety, but I like to say we gave him that push first. And then last year, you guys had Brandon Boston, Sharif Cooper, Isaiah Todd. Um, I'm trying to think, what other players did you have? Uh, Scotty Barnes. Yes. That that uh, AOT versus Knight Riders game, that was something right. special, man. <laughs> right. right. Uh, Davion. Um, yeah, Davion. Uh, uh, look, they're going to Ole Miss. We had Davion. We had mm -hmm. uh, what's the name? They're going to Xavier. We had Joe. Uh, that played with CP25. Um, the the guy that played with Game Elite that's going to Tennessee. Um, Jalen um, Jaden Springer. No, Corey Walker. Okay, Corey Walker. Corey Walker. Uh, that Corey Walker. So it was it was still star studded last year. Um, and it's been star studded every year. So, um, yeah, so it's been, it's just been super dope, man, to have that type of crowd. If it wasn't for COVID this year, it would have got super packed in there. And it, it did get super packed in there, but, uh, it, it would have been got, even more. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in Atlanta, you guys have so many AAU programs. So Nike has... AOT, Game Elite, no, sorry, AOT and the Georgia Stars. Adidas has the Atlanta Celtics, Game Elite. Under Armour has the Atlanta Express. But then you also have the independent sneaker teams like Team Huncho, um, Free Bands Elite, mm -hmm. um, and some, some more teams I can't name at this time. Sorry for all the people out there. Oh, Double Trouble Elite. Um, and so on and so on. Um, how does it feel to have, you know, that major event that showcases a lot of team, a lot of the, the, the areas, teams that a lot of people outside the city don't know about? It, it feels great, man. I tell you, like, 
um, being a place where here's the thing is Nike protect their bottom line. Adidas will protect their bottom line. Um, Under Armour protect their bottom line. So they only compete against each other. Uh, independent protect their bottom line, which is really trying to beat the shoe company teams, right? Right. So it's it's a place where you everybody get to play everybody, right? So now you can't hide behind the EYBL and only play EYBL teams. You know what I mean? Like if you think about the maker kid that just went to uh, Howard, right? He he played with Adidas team, Dream Vision, right? So imagine Dream Vision playing AOT. Now, everybody would want to see that. You know what I mean? So this is how this came about. It's like, let's not, let's not be an EYBL or Adidas affiliate. We come into the tip off and everybody go at it. You know what I mean? And like, if it's a great independent team, we're going to throw you in there as well. You know what I mean? Like, and tip off is known for not having games off. Like you got to play every game. Uh, right. and, and that's what we pride ourselves on is like every game is going to be a game. And we, we put those teams in there and let them battle it out. And at the end of the day, you truly can say that this is the best team. And it's, best, it's better off not playing just affiliated with Nike teams, but everybody, you right. know? Uh, and that's how this concept came about because they only play in their leagues for the majority yeah. of, uh, of the season. And I love that. I love how you guys are doing it down there with all, you know, all the sneaker circuit teams and the independent teams playing against each other. I just wish that up here in New York, we don't necessarily have that because it's like a lot of the AAU teams up here, you know, because right now we have three EYBL teams. Um, I want to say two on the Adidas circuit and one on the Under Armour circuit. You know, you have these programs that for one reason or another, they don't want to, you know, they don't want to go up against each other. It could be that they're scared or they feel like they don't have anything to prove. But down there in Georgia, you guys, like, nobody really ducks the smoke, really. Well, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. It ain't because they're scared. It's political. So it's all political, That's also right? Reason. So, so if you got to keep – if you got to play – a lot of a lot of these teams like to hide their players. So meaning that they boost them up based off marketing, social, social media value. So mixtape make a kid hot, Right. So this is supposed to be the number one player in New York, hypothetically, right? Right. Now, he plays for this team, PSA Cardinals. So let's say hypothetically he played with PSA Cardinals. Now, he got the light, meaning that he's been, he's been thrusted into the light. Why would I play an independent team and lose to an independent team and take away that light? You know what right. I mean? And that's how, they, that's how they view it. But that's not the right way to do it. Because where I'm from, we play anybody, anywhere, anytime, any place, where you want it, you're going to get it. That's how it will. Like, <laughs> if I'm walking past a, 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 a sandlot and they playing ball, I'm strapping them up and I'm playing. Right. Because here's the issue, Dave. Here's the issue. You can't hide them in college. Yeah, you can't. When they go to college, they're going to look. And this is why Transfer Portal is so big right now. Mm -hmm. is because when they go to college, you can't hide them. And then they get exposed. And then they haven't had that many reps. They just did it off of social media hype. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but, you know, I hope that one day my city will be able to, you know, that all teams would be able okay. to play each other. But, you know. <laughs> It is what sounded, it is. He sounded like Martin Luther then. I just dream <laughs> one day one that day. all my teams will be able to. That would be. Play, that would, I would equally. love to see that. You know, but <laughs> it's just not. It's not in the cards. But anyway, um, but tell them. Tell them to come to the tip off, man. Like, tell them to come to the tip off. We'll treat. We'll treat them real nice. We'll make sure <laughs> they get good bump. You know what I mean? And, and, and like, you know, we we give them the exposure they need because after the tip off, so many kids got offers. You know what I mean? So right. many kids got um you know independent kids got offers i mean it was, it was just crazy the exposure that come from that right so that's what we try to do it's about these kids going to college it ain't about a political statement it's about these kids going to college uh i never put out on how many coaches contact me because it's not about me mm, you know what i mean mm -mm, it's all about yeah. these kids so you'll never see me tweet out uga such and such I, all these coaches man it was five thousand people that watched that broadcast right you know, five. Wow. Yeah. 
Wow. Guess what? Guess what I did? I gave the college coaches the packets for free. Free. Meaning that you don't pay, have to pay for these college packets. You get it for free. And, you know, if these kids go to college, then that's, that's good enough for me. Yo, that, that beats any other tournament. That's just, you know, because a lot of these other tournaments are looking to make money. That's you, the whole problem. You gave, them, you, gave them, you gave them everything they needed for free. I would right. hope that these coaches take advantage of this. But here's the thing. Because I do that, they're going to always come back. And so I never have to mm. worry about that. So it's a business thing, right? right? And one thing I learned in business is this, is that pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. And so when you get too greedy, you're going to get slaughtered. So it's okay to make money, but when you start getting greedy, yeah, it's only a matter of time, man. So pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered, man. I love and, that quote. And, and, and for me, I'm not money hungry as long as these kids get exposure and getting the chance to go to college, I'm super happy. I'm super happy with it. And I don't need them. They ain't nothing worth worse than, ain't nothing worth more than a kid getting a free college education. There's no more amount of money you can pay me if a kid get a free college education. So I gave the Packers away for free. Yo, that's big right there. You know, like I said, kudos to you. You know, a lot of people would not have done that, but, Kudos to you, Jerome. I really, I love that idea. So everything that you just said, which segues into this next, um, my ne into this next question. So you, you already, we all have had to deal with COVID. There weren't any college coaches in the building, unfortunately, but you still made it pop, you know, like you had some stringent rules for that weekend, you know, Tell us about, you know, the approach for 2020 tip-off classic. 2020? You talking about this year or next year? This year. <laughs> okay, this year. So here's the thing. I wasn't going to do it at all. Um, it was just the thought of, of, of running an event during COVID was very scary. Uh, I wasn't going to do it at all. <clears throat> but what happened was this. There's two things that happened. Number one was George Floyd, right? And that really hit me hard. And it was like, bang. And I just seen that <clears throat> Tishon Hightower, y'all can look him up. Mm -hmm. Tishon Hightower was one of my kids that I coached. <clears throat> and then he ended up getting arrested for, it, he was at uh, Tulane. And y'all, it was on ESPN. He got arrested for murder. Okay. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And I remember so, that story. So I'm thinking if you take away COVID, he would have been at school. If you take away, give this kid something to do who come from a troubled background, give him something to do, he wouldn't be involved, right? So this is, this is bothering me. And like, even me being quarantined and being in the house for so many days, I had to get out and just take a ride around the block because my mind was like, fuck, like ain't nothing to do, right? Yeah. So I even had to just drive just to drive, like just to get out the house. So if yeah. it's doing it for me at 40, I can only imagine what it's doing for a kid that's 18, 19 years old or 16 or 15 years old that can't go nowhere, everything's closed, right? So once we got the okay from the state to run it with certain guidelines, I call my people in Atlanta. So I feel like Atlanta is like a mob, right? I feel like it's kind of mobbish when it comes to basketball, right? So it's certain people in Atlanta that kind of make things go when it comes to basketball. And so I reached out to these people and I'm like, look, I was really thinking about not doing it, but you know what I mean? I know these kids need something to do. It's a lot going on. It's like, man, if it's safe, then do it. If it's safe, then do it because these kids need something to do, right? So I come up with the guidelines, which was, as you say, stringent, but it was doable, right? So we mandatory mask wearing for every spectator that came in the building. And you see me walking around telling people put, like if they even have it under their nose, put it up, put yeah. it up. You know what I mean? Like very, 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 very strenuous, all right? Everybody get a temperature check before they come in the door. Which is also Everybody. smart. You know, so also we had after every game, we cleared the gym, right? And cleaned it. We cleaned the spectators part as well as the, the, the players part. 
and then we wait to the next time slot and then call the next people in for the next game. Now, if you had an armband, you could come back in, but you just had to leave after that game. For my media people, I just let them sit there. They don't have to do that because they was media. But everybody else had to leave out and, and recycle in. So we did that. We made sure the balls were clean. We made sure um, – Everybody was checked before they come in. It was very strenuous, but I thought it was a very success as far as keeping people safe and allowing these kids to release some of that stress and have fun. Yeah, man. So, again, kudos to you for giving these kids an outlet because right now in New York, we don't have nothing. Like, ain't no tournaments going on because, you know, the Parks Department, they shut down all the permits. You know, right now, if we were bu- – if if things were – if you know if the permits were allowed, like we would have had New York versus New York, which is a a big thing that Nike's going has going on. Like all the tournaments would have been taking place, but you know, last week that day I just came home, July sixth is when they put the rims back up in all the parks because mm. I think as soon as everything started with the pandemic, they took all the rims down. So for a period of maybe two or three months. There were, there were, I mean, there were some parks that had rims, but you know, you have people climbing in parks with rims just to play ball. You know, they didn't really have anything. And right now, as far as the crime is concerned, like we have, we've had up to 500 plus shootings this year. You know, there's a lot of murders going on. Like we've just had two kids, you know, that, um, that were murdered in the streets. You know Mm. what I'm saying? Both of them basketball players. Mm. So one of them was about to go off to college. You know what I'm saying? He was committed to the school in California. You know, Mm. today was his funeral. And um, yeah, you know, like right now we could really use like some type of events. Like, and at one point, summer youth, you know, for, you know, the kids, like jobs for the youth, that was shut down, but now they're doing, they're bringing it back up virtually. Right. So, you know, like there's a lot of things that we need right now that we don't have up up here. But in Atlanta, at least, like, I'm happy that the kids are able to have these outlets, that they're able to go to a gym, that they're able to, you know, to experience these things. In in the defense of New York, New York was hit the hardest uh, in the United States. Right. Also, you know, so every response to what's going on in New York is based off how hard it was hit. Yeah. Uh, Atlanta wasn't hit as hard in the beginning. And then, you know, the stuff started to spike up a little bit. But I'll say this. Um, I mean, it's no, it's no science to it, right? So mm-hmm. if we're not meant to be in a pandemic, we're not meant to be in a situation where we got to do certain things. I think we did a great job on how we did it and a lot of businesses need to implement what we do. But if New York started a tournament tomorrow, they gonna get hit hard because they don't know what to do when it comes to running the event in the pandemic. Right. Now, they can put in guidelines, and I'm telling you, like, Friday for us was a learning experience. Mm -hmm. You know, Friday for us, we got bombarded. It was like, you know, we had to kick everybody out, turn the lights off type stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, I remember that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we got bombarded, so we learning as we go, right? So just imagine if it's something like that in New York and it's more people or whatever the situation yeah. have you, it creates this big old thing. So I think we learned a lot Friday. We implemented a more Saturday and Sunday. We Saturday and Sunday, we had it rolling. Yeah. But the point is this, is that it's no science to it because we're not meant to be in a pandemic. That's so, true. so I think with everybody learning and going out there now, they can kind of take some information from Atlanta reach out to me if you need to, to get some more insight on how to do it. And then maybe, um, you know, they can do it, you know. But, um, so also my next question. So how, 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 you, you mean, you said that um the packets were given out for free to the coaches. Like how good, how, how happy were you to have all the media come out, especially the ones from out of state, including me? <laughs> Um, you know, here's the thing. It's like um, somebody said something about uh, media being out there. It's like that every year. Um, I mean, like we call it media row because <laughs> if you look down the baseline, it's just camera, 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 crank camera. And this is what makes the tip-off classic so special is because 
other than the Peach Jam, you don't see that many cameras at an event. Um, and I, I honestly say my event is second to none. And if you had to put Peach Jam there, I say Peach Jam always going to be Nike. It's always going to be here, right? Right. But other than that, I don't see too many events messing with them. Um, you know, and even, and we seen that in COVID. So imagine COVID was in there. Like I had all, a lot of teams coming that couldn't come that were still premier players and uh, that didn't come because of COVID. So uh, I like to put my event up there and say like it's one of the best events in the country. Um, you know, like Peace Jam is definitely one of the best events in the country. But other than that, man, it's not too many that can do it on that level. That's true. Um, so what would, um, what would you say were, um, you know, who would you say were the standout, the players that really stood out the best? It was a couple, man. I tell you my favorite player and it's, it's, it's weird. Cause, uh, I don't know, man, like it's weird, but my favorite player is Andrew McConnell. So um, I'm Andrew McConnell, man, he really, he really, he really did his thing this past, um, Two weeks ago, he really did his thing. He just, he so much reminds me of uh, CP3 uh, with a better jump shot. Uh, he, he's not very, he's not very like flamboyant, but he just gets it done, man. He gets it done. Like from a point guard position, he gets it done. So I think he's like one of my favorites. And, and if, if a college coach ain't know him, shame on you. Because I guarantee mm -hmm. you this kid going far. Um, he's going to be one of those kids he can shoot better than anybody in Georgia, period. Um, and he's just steady going up. He can handle the ball. I never seen him lose the ball. He always made the right play. It was just he just got that basketball IQ that I truly love. That's my favorite player right now. But I think who did the most was Matthew Cleveland. Uh stood out a lot. Um, you know, potential McDonald All American based off his performances in, in, in these games. Um, but uh, Matthew Cleveland, you got uh, – oh, Brandon Huntley is a problem. Do y'all hear me? Like, Brandon Huntley is a problem. Like, this kid possesses every every skill it is on the basketball court he possesses. And it's super amazing to see him play. So, Brandon Huntley, J.D. Davidson, uh, Miles, like, it was just a lot, man. It was a lot. Mm. T. Huncho had a team. Like, it was just a lot, man. Like, and I didn't get – I had to go back and watch a lot of that on SUV TV because uh, I was obviously working. But, um, but yeah, it was a lot that benefited from it. So, you guys definitely had, you know, some talent on the high school level as well as the middle school level. Free bands elite, man. That, like, they're, they're, they're going to – if – like, they probably don't even need that sneaker contract. If they can keep all those kids together throughout high school, I think they're going to be really solid because, you know, they were really, really good. Mm -hmm. And like, how does it? Feel, how did it feel to have a celebrity like Young Scooter out there? Well, me and Scooter, I know Scooter personally. Um, here's the thing: with this basketball fan, you just meet a lot of celebrities, right? And it it comes to the point where it's not even no longer a celebrity. <laughs> like it's like it's part of who it is. Like you know, Dwight Howard usually come to the event every year. Um, you know, we have Juwan Howard that came last year. Like, it's just, it's no longer a celebrity, but it do, it feels great to have that support from those guys. But I know those guys personally, Scoot, um, you know, he, he running free bands and leads. Sometimes, you know, future come through. Um, and that's always a, 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 a pleasant to get him, get him there. But yeah, it's, it's just, it's just one of those things, man. It's a basketball thing where, um, you know, you got Migo. You know what I mean? You got Quavo that got their team. Sometimes they come through. Mm -hmm. So it's all a part of uh, just sports and celebrity, right? So that kind of just go together. You know, every rapper want to hoop, every hooper want to rap. <laughs> That's true. All right. So this is a question that I love to ask my guests before I lead up to the final question. So if you could go back to, say, 2016, when you first started um, the Tip-Off Classic, what would you say, what would you tell yourself back then as you begin this brand new journey? I would say keep work. You know what I mean? Uh, I say this is every year been a growing experience. However, um, because of my faith and belief in myself and how hard I work, that 
I, I knew it was going to get to this point. It just, in the beginning, you, you never, you never really fathom it. You, it's like, you know, it's going to happen if you continue to work, but you don't see it in 2016. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't feel it. You don't see it. The money don't, uh, it don't say it. You know what I mean? So it's like, you have those little issues and then it's like, you know, just keep plugging at it, keep plugging at it. Um, and then eventually everybody knows about it. So here you are down from New York, you know about it now. And you posting like hell about it. <laughs> you know of what I mean? course. So, I have so, to. Yeah. So, you know, you only going to spread the word to more New York teams. And, mm -hmm. and next year, we'll probably get a couple New York teams to come down, which we had a couple that reached out this year, but it was just too late. We sell out kind of early. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so you just continue to grow based off uh, this popularity, man. And so we just hope that it continues to grow. Final question. What's next in the future for Jerome Weaver, Who Hustlers, and the Tip Off Classic? All right, so because all right, so here's the good thing that came out the whole COVID thing. Like normally, I do the Tip Off Classic in April. It's Easter weekend every year, right? But because of COVID, I had to move it back to July and July Fourth weekend. So now, next year is going to be two Tip Off Classics. So now we're going to do the one in April and the one in July. Uh, we'll be session one and session two. So two tip-off classic, one in April, one in July. So that, that's coming forward. Uh, both of them are going to be star-studded. Um, and again, this came out, this whole COVID thing. I never thought about doing an event in July, but now tip-off classic was so good in July. Why not add it permanently, right? So now you got the April joint that warms you up for the live period, and you got the July joint that warms you up for the live period. I think it's a perfect combination, and that's what – next for us i might have to choose one or the other because it's going to be <laughs> tough because I, I i'm trying to save my bread for peach jam <laughs> <laughs> well you probably want to come in april day because you know peach jam in july yeah. too so usually peach jam will probably be the week after that that's true yeah yeah and these yeah. flights are expensive so you know how that yeah. goes yeah yeah so so yeah you probably want to come to the april one then well, Jerome, thank you for coming on, and I wish you nothing but the best with Hoop Hustlers and the Tip Off Classic moving forward. Thank you, Dave, man. Thank you for having me, and you have a great one as well. Indeed. Yo, everybody, shout outs to Jerome Weaver and Tip Off Classic. Um, this is episode 50. Um, check for those in Atlanta, go check out this episode on YouTube, Facebook, and IGTV. Stay safe, stay blessed. Peace. Peace.